Um, Anita, thanks. And thanks to everybody that has joined the call today. I'm super excited to be here. I am a, histor I am a CFO by training um, for quite a long time. <laughs> quite a long time. And in uh, healthcare primarily, I grew up in healthcare. And several, several years ago, I went out on my own to uh, consult independently with private businesses on my way into the startup world with uh, University of Arizona. And so I've had a lot of fun um, being involved that way. So super excited to chat with you today. We are going to um, talk through why you need a CFO, why startups need a CFO. And um, I hope you um, enjoy it. Okay, so I was thinking through like what I wanted to uh, present today when Anita said, you know, we, we want you to do this. And I was thinking about, you know, why, how the finance area of running your companies is sometimes a mystery and um, how most folks are, um, experienced in their operational idea and they're very passionate about it and then um, we talk about finance and everything that goes around finance and and uh, lots of times people will uh, throw up their hands and say i don't know i don't get it or you know they just glaze over because in general it's kind of a dry topic for lots of folks so I, I got to the point where i was like you know what i'm going to tell this like it's a story so the presentation today is called Passionate Entrepreneur, who says, I'm a startup, I don't need a CFO, and the fairy godmother CFO who says, ah, but you do. So the, the challenge for every startup that you guys all know very, very clearly is that it's a balance between expertise and money. And the most precious resource you have when you're a startup is, is that cash. And specifically, there's never enough of it. So when you start building your company, you've got, um, you've got uh, this super excited entrepreneur that has an innovative idea, maybe a specialized operator to ex execute that innovative idea. And a lot of times that's gonna be the same person. So uh, you're operating on a true string budget and you're gonna bootstrap this whole thing. And um, it's a lot of work and it's a heavy burden but you tell yourself, I have to spend wisely and focus on getting my company off the ground because that's what a good business person does. And I will bring in a CFO when the company is big and really needs that position. So then what happens? There is no formalized finance or if you have one of some sort, it's, it's lacking um, in certain important areas. Um, and so you're missing out on some basic fundamentals of business finance operations. You have no CFO leadership providing guidance around finance function, governance, compliance, and data management. So if you break it down into small pieces, which is always the way I try to approach problem solving and um, solution development, is that your business is basically like needs three building blocks. What you do now, I don't know what's happening there, Anita. Okay, sorry, I think there was some feedback, but it should be fine now. Okay, so let's imagine that we're all the passionate entrepreneur and uh, today we're really tired because we're on our eighth night in a row of not much sleep. And last night, like all the others, uh, passionate entrepreneur is staring at the ceiling in the dark, going through the checklist in their heads of everything that's not done. And passionate entrepreneur is thinking about operational issues and maybe things are moving too slow and there's no cash to make it happen faster or what if it's going like gangbusters and the company can't keep up too fast. It's all too fast. So passion entrepreneur is in this hazy consciousness and an angel taps 
on <clears throat> and an angel taps on passion entrepreneur on the forehead once twice three times and then a bit harshly in your opinion you hear wake up already so you're there for a few minutes and you're not really sure what's going on. You've heard this voice tell you to wake up already. And then softly, much more comfortingly, you hear, hello, my smart and ambitious entrepreneur. I'm Fairy Godmother CFO. And you think, ah, oh, so kind, that voice. You feel all snugly in your bed. Then you hear, get pen and paper, write this down. And uh-oh, that harsh voice is back. So what, Fairy Godmother CFO has to say is that you have to plan. What you know and what you don't know, you have to plan it. You must plan the execution of your brilliant idea. But also, you've got to plan for the boring stuff like governance, compliance, finance. And then Fairy Godmother leans in really close. Start with the basics, like, account like an accounting system. And it can be a spreadsheet at the beginning you want to record every single transaction. Um, you need to tell yourself if there's not a record and no document, it didn't happen. That is going to save you later if you are good at collecting all of your uh, information and maintaining all your documentation. Don't do it too long because when you finally put your spreadsheet information into an accounting platform, it's going to be a real pain in the butt, says your godmother CFO. And with a little knowing look, she tells you, just trust me. Thing, next thing that you should think about is getting a document storage system. Don't be the business owner at the end of the year with a shoebox of mostly missing invoices, contracts, no evidence of the company's revenues, and no cash receipts. And as you think about like why that's important, um, <clears throat> the big you know the big thing is your tax return. If you end up getting audited, you have to justify your expenses. You're going to have to provide invoices, contracts, you know, receipts for payments for your expenses. And then on the flip side, you have to have evidence of your revenues. So if there's no documentation of the revenues and the cash receipts, maybe the IRS is going to think you had more revenue and cash receipts than you actually had. So you, you can really get uh, uh, burned on both sides if you don't keep your documentation. So how do, how do you go about this? First, you create a simple process to pay the bills. Standardize that process and follow it. Do the same thing for billing, accounts receivable, and cash receipts. Put in appropriate internal controls. Get that money into the bank. Um, and also put that money in a business checking account and do not dare run personal expenses through that business account. I will know, says Fairy Godmother CFO. What we just talked about is just a hint of things to do in the first building block, the first stage when you think about your company from a finance standpoint. With a strong start to the finance function beginning to take shape, then you can plan the short term and the future stages. Fairy Godmother CFO looks at passionate entrepreneur and notices that passionate entrepreneur looks scared. There's not much color in, in the face. A drop of perspiration is now running down the cheek. Meekly, passionate entrepreneur asks, what are the next building blocks? Well, says the fairy godmother CFO, this is where finance gets fun. Forecasting flat cash flows, forecasting operations scenarios, assessing various short-term capital and financing options, deciding on data, information, analytics, and systems needs. Budgeting the upcoming year based on capacity and operational goals is a very key piece of your short-term planning, because that is gonna be your springboard into figuring out what your, your future is going to be and setting up those goals to meet short-term um, 
is the basis for how you will be able to fund your future um, as well as um, make your decisions about what will be next. So when you think about the future and what that building block um, needs to accomplish for you, uh, there's lots of questions to think about. Will your company just be a long running company? Um, is, are you going to expand it? Are you going to buy up competitors? Um, uh, maybe actually you want to opt for a private sale and you want a healthy exit with a big, huge paycheck to go into the bank. And you want to do that in a few years. Or maybe you want to think about the right time for major fundraising and maybe when is the time to issue an IPO. All right, so <clears throat> it's been a long conversation here in the middle of the night and at this point now it's time to get up. Your hand is cramped from writing so many notes. Your head is exploding even more with even more stuff to worry about. Plus you are hungry. Your voice breaks a little and you tell Fairy Godmother CFO, I have no idea where or how to begin. Fairy Godmother smiles and pets you sweetly on your head. And then here comes the harsh voice again. As Fairy Godmother says, get yourself a CFO. So the big picture around the finance function and what you wanna think about is uh, managing your cash, um, being sure that you are, are strategized for the roller coaster because there's going to be tons of ups and downs in running your business. Things that you didn't expect, things that make you go off the rails. You've got to figure out that plan to get back on the rails. Um, you've just got to be prepared for a wild ride. And if you've got a CFO by your side, that person is going to be able to help strategize you um, through those, those bumpy rides. Um, you want to be sure that you're running on an efficient infrastructure. Um, you know, we're talking right now about finance and basically your finance and accounting functions, but CFOs can be very instrumental in your IT infrastructure and, uh, you know, other things like setting up your governance, um, making sure that you're, you're in compliance with human resources, so you want to be sure that you're running on an efficient infrastructure. CFOs um, drive data and analytics. Anything that a CFO does in terms of decision making for a company or in support of a CEO's decision making should be based in the data and the analytics. Um, you, know, you don't want to make decisions and particularly like really high dollar decisions, um, you know, from you know, the seat of your pants. Um, and you always want to be sure you understand your numbers and that you are um, comfortable with all of the very various outcomes that potentially could happen from making a decision. And so that there comes into play a very key responsibility of your CFO, which is going to be your cash forecasting and your performing your per your pro forma financial analysis, um, telling you like you know, mostly like, what if, what if I do this, then what? Um, you also want that CFO to be there for you because who, that's the person that's going to guide you to get the big money when you are ready to, um, you know, launch into your next grand phase of growth and, um, you know, big, 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 big opportunities. And that gets you to that gets you all of those go together and help make you ready for your next big milestone, whatever that is. If that is again, um, you know, major growth and expansion, or if it's selling a company, or if it's um, you know picking up um, investors or going through um, a public offering. So what happens to a lot of companies in the startup phase is that they wait too long to engage with someone that brings invaluable guidance in the finance arena. Um, so you want to think about how you actually can come across a modern finance leader and you want to be sure that they have a blend of technical and non-technical skills that include financial aptitude, strategic thinking, and technical abilities. Financial aptitude is essential, especially during this challenging startup years. 
Um, the CFO will bring to your company solid accounting experience, business acumen, and an exceptional grasp of business analytics. Um, you also want a strategic thinker. Um, most people don't know that strategic CFOs are pretty creative and visionary when it comes to planning and problem solving. Um, so, you know, when you've got a CFO by your side, you've got more than just, you know, the bean counter wearing, you know, the green, the green visor. Um, you've got a person who is really helping you run your company from, um, from the inside out. And the other part of that is that, you know, as you run your company, as you run operations, um, everything comes back to your financial statement and the bottom line of your of your income statement. So it's all about financial performance. And, um, you know, we all know, uh, you know, if there's no money, there's no mission. And so uh, it's essential that you have someone who has these skill sets. The other part that I think is really important around um, a strategic CFO is that they're going to be um, they're going to be broad in terms of general knowledge and depth of experience in um, the operations of the company. So that doesn't mean that, you know, you might, you'll, you'll have to find a CFO that like knows your industry because, um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the strategies, a lot of the concepts, a lot of the uh, technical approaches that a CFO is gonna bring with them can be applied to any industry. So what you what you really want is just that somebody with that deep um, desire to connect operations to the financial um, side of the house, because that is that's where you're going to be able to actually like start learning how to run your business efficiently. Um, that's where they're going to be able to be uh, super effective. Um, and instrumental in designing the approach and the execution of your short-term and long-term goals. So, um, strategic CFOs come to the table with a strong combination of business and operational knowledge. The last, um, the last skill set is technical abilities, and technology, in, you know, influences business decisions um, substantially. And a strong CFO that understands how technology impacts your business can drive your company towards efficiencies. And that is going to be um, from the standpoint of both time and cost. Um, and, you know, an easy example um, is some sort is, you know, process automation. Um, and something as simple as, you know, you're running your financial, you're, you know, you're running your books on QuickBooks and you've got, let's say, um, some kind of your some kind of a retail operation and you're running light speed for your inventory um, so you want your general ledger to be accurate with your inventory information and you want your income statement to be accurate with your sales data and let's say you have to um, pay sales tax collect sales tax and pay sales tax so you need that data to post correctly into revenue and your sales tax payable so you can pay somebody, um, let's just say like a bookkeeper or, you know, an accountant, you know, somewhere between, you know, 15 and $25 an hour to manually get the data out of Lightspeed and manually create the journal entries to put the data into QuickBooks. But if you have a savvy CFO, that person's going to say, well, let's, let's see how we can automate this process. And they will dig into the light speed and they will find the solution that you actually can automate your process and they'll set up they'll set up the links that are needed to automatically post from light speed into uh, your quickbooks and now you know that couple three hours four hours of figuring out that situation the solution and and uh, implementing it um, has now saved you, you know, the 15 to, you know, 15 to 25 dollars an hour that you might be paying um, an accountant to do that work for you. So, um, and there's lots of there's lots of simple simple examples like that that um, you know seem like maybe they're not a big deal, but when you start adding up 
you know, being smart and leveraging technology like that, you really find yourself in um, a much better place. And you've got the opportunity then, like when you have personnel, like say, you know, your accounting team, you, you can then focus them on things that are actually much more value added to the company. Um, uh, when you start getting bigger and building it, like your analytics needs um, and things like that. So um, I think um, overall, just again to reiterate um, the big picture slide here, those are the things that are super important. When I look at this particular slide, um, there's a reason why managing the cash is first. Um, first and foremost, um, you, you've got to know that you've got that resource to move this forward and especially when you feel like there's not enough cash you really want to be smart and strategic and thoughtful about where and how and when you spend that cash so um i'm uh really happy to be part of the program and um, i've had uh several calls with a few of you and uh, I just want to thank everybody because it's a really exciting environment and I am very happy to be a part of it. Um, just a little bit about my um, own uh, entrepreneurial activity. Uh, I left corporate healthcare about four years ago and uh, founded my own consulting firm called Pinnell Consulting LLC. And I actually do have registered DBAs for Pinnell Consulting, Savant CFO, and Arizona Innovators Champion. And uh, the reason that I have those three DBAs is because I focus in very specific areas. Pinnell Consulting is really um, uh, focused at private business owners. And there's no specific industry. I have actually a, a wide range of interesting clients and in interesting industries. Um, Savant CFO is actually um, where I focus um, my cannabis work. I actually have um, I work with cannabis clients who need um, the advice and um, expertise around how they actually correctly do their accounting and their inventory recognition and um, how they properly recognize all the excluded expenses that they're not allowed to claim. Did you say cannabis? I could, yes. I could, I could use some cannabis. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, and then also in Arizona Innovators Champion, um, that came about because I did get involved with Tech Launch Arizona a few years ago and then ended up working with some of the startups out of that program. And so, um, so when I'm working with the startups um, through the Arizona Technology um, and the Arizona uh, Center for Innovation, those um, are really kind of under my umbrella of Arizona Innovators Champion. But um, I just do want to tell you guys, I think all of you are fantastic. I think this program is amazing. And um, however I can help, I you know have office hours on Mondays and Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and um, you can catch me on email or the telephone, however it works for you. But I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of you.